welcome, welcome. This is Come On CFL presented by Come On the Podcast, partnered with Bet99. We got a special one for y'all tonight. It's your boy, Nikki T, three-time Grey Cup champion, CFL, Winnipeg twice, Ottawa one year. And we bring on a special guest with me today as our host. He's with me, Alden Darby, out of where? What, what school it is again? Arizona State, man. You know. <laughs> oh, okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, uh, two-time Great Cup champion. Two-time Great Cup champ, CFL All Star. Once with Toronto, once okay. with, uh, of course, Winnipeg with you. Okay. Phil side, Phil side is definitely Phil live. side, baby. He's definitely live. Phil side is live, baby. Yeah, man, we got a special one coming on today, tonight. Um, a lot of stuff happened in the CFL. That's why I wanted to get um, Darby opinion, see how he feels about things. You know, we got major news, breaking news come out this breaking. morning. Um, and then we have a lot of quarterbacks moving around this week. We got benchings going on this week. We got new starters going on this week. We got a starter coming out of – from an injury, big time injury, he's gonna get the back to start this week, and man, a lot of things, man, a lot of things. So, um, first off, first off, we're gonna dive into last week. Um, the first game, we're gonna keep this short, y'all, because we got so much shit to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, the first game we had was Sask at Ottawa, twenty-two twenty-two tie. That game was really sloppy at the beginning. Mm-hmm. It turned out to be, <laughs> um. Decided by the referees? Yeah, man, I I don't like when that happens, you know, but as as a football player and as a fan, you know, I, I sometimes try to not be so hard on the refs because I can argue no. the fact that I can argue the fact that the league doesn't doesn't full time hire these guys. What do yep. you expect? You got a referee like my guy Juice that normally refs the east the East games. You got this guy that is refing on Saturday but working a regular job Monday through Friday. He's not, he doesn't have that much time to really dive into football and things like that. Although you can't allow a game to be, I feel like, decided by a ref. I didn't like that. I don't like how a game ends like that. The the booth, what, we viewed it? Yeah. <laughs> the, the boys celebrated. <laughs> the boys are celebrated, man. The man has to get it on him almost. And we, and we, hold on, wait, don't get on the team oh. just yet. Come back. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was, um, that's probably one of the craziest run decisions I've seen personally because I mean, yeah, it was like ten minutes after nobody knew what was going on. It so. had social media in an uproar. Yeah, yeah nobody knew what was going on. Uh, we in the chat room because we still got our old DB chat from Winnipeg mm-hmm. and, and, and the all boys going off. I'm like, I ain't even watch. I had to go back and rewatch the game, and I see also Drew Brown got hurt. Jeez, that's a big yeah, one that's for all of right now. I, I'll tell you, the crazy thing is, is I turned the game off. And I went to go, now it's okay, game over. Me and my lady gonna watch some reality TV or something. And I didn't know I didn't know until the next day. <laughs> Cause I'm like, okay, phone down now, I'm done for the night. The boys won. Good job. I wake up the next morning, I'm like, what, what do you mean the refs? The refs get this. So I, I yeah. go back and watch the clip. I said, No, no way. But, all right, but when it comes to that clip, is the rules the rules? You know, he kind of rolled into them. And I, I feel, I feel like every ref is different. Every ref sees the game different. That's why I think it's important. Like, one thing when I played for New Orleans Saints, Sean Payne did a good job of letting us know every game who was refing our game. What mm-hmm. calls are they normally called? Who are you going to go, going against? Who, who are you dealing with? What jobs do they have in real life? So you know how stressful they might come up to that game. And I felt like that was a very key aspect to our game in New Orleans. Did we win a lot? No. But I think it was a key aspect to our time there because it's important to know, hey, this ref might call – uh, uh, ticky tack fouls like this in the game who's known. So it's like you need to know these things. And I've seen my guy Stavros, shout out Goose. He actually posted side by side clip of the exact same play. One was a no call, one was a call. And I've, even as a fan, you can look at that and agree with it. But then once I said to myself, you got to go back to say who was refing that. Two different refs, two different mindsets. You know. So hey, so everybody besides Ottawa fans are saying that's a good call. I mean, it's a bad call. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much, <laughs> but you know how that goes, you know. Yeah, I feel like, like you said, rules are rules, though. End of the day, I feel like they could have been a little quicker or a little like 
let us Make know that let us know that you're even doing that. You mm-hmm. know, like immediately after, I feel like that's a play. In that instance, if the ref on field sees a low tackle, he should kind of calm everybody down and call the booth and say, "Hey, what do you think?" Yeah. And then some better than that, I just think it was so drawn out that that's what was the, that that's what confused us. How yeah. drawn out it was, you know. The backup quarterbacks, they did their thing. Um, it's becoming a thing. I, I I came on the podcast last week. I say the best teams that win in this league have a good backup quarterback because mm-hmm. your, your quarterback is not making it through this through this no. eighteen game season for the most part. You, it's rare mm-hmm. that it happened. Last year, the only quarterback that did it was Jake Myers on Calgary, and he had the most up and down year. And yeah. I was so confused to that. I'm thinking he should have the best year because he got to play with his guys mm-hmm. for most of the year. He got the repetition. Most times when your backup quarterback come in, you usually fall off a little bit. But these teams are seeming to hold it down a little bit. Dustin Crumb got last year when he came in as a backup and played some substantial minutes. And then we got Shea Patterson, who's been holding down the fort for Trevor Harris since, like, game two or game three of the season. He's been doing well. Um, So if you don't have a backup quarterback in this league to hold you down for three, four, five games, you usually end up, you know, playing on the road the first game, if you even make it to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Or... You know, it's just you just need a backup quarterback in this league, just how it goes. Yeah, I agree, and I think the the if you look at these backup quarterbacks that are in the league, you look at the teams that they are that they're on. You know, um, they're well coached and they have yep. good defenses behind them. You know, you got the kid Davis in Montreal, great defense behind them. You got Patterson and Sass, great defense behind them. Um, you got Dustin Crum coming in. That's a well coached team with I think a great dual offense threat. coordinator, a great and, they're, offense and they're coordinator. dual threat, so they're a little bit more. Exactly. They can play a little bit more freely because they have the ability yeah. to escape. You know, they don't know they don't know the read so much because they don't know the offense is mm-hmm. as good as the number one quarterback. So having a quarterback that's dual threat as your backup quarterback could get out of some jams when he necessarily don't see the reads like the number one usually would see. That's definitely a benefit to them. And, and it's film. How much film do we have on these guys? You know, we can go back. I mean, how many times? I mean, we were watching Dustin Crumb's college tape or when he was in. Um, <laughs> what was that quarterback from? Um, Edmonton in 2021, the six foot nine guy we watched his AFL Haley tape. Cornell, you know I mean? Cornell, yeah. we were watching this AFL tape or whatever that was. You know, so we, we, you don't have film on these guys either, and it's a different game up here. You can watch a guy in college and say, "Oh, he can make every throw," and then get in and he can't make a throw. So I think that's also a key point. That field is why. That, that field is definitely why. That field is hey, definitely why. I know a lot of NFL quarterbacks come to this league and struggle. Because that field is wide, the extra player on the field. And that's why when a lot of people are like, well, it's just the CFL. I'm like, man, listen here. I done seen top-notch third-rounders, fourth-rounders come to this league and can't even get off the bench or make it to the damn practice roster because the league is And that's every position, I feel like. A lot of (laughs) You got first-round picks that come up here and just can't pan out. It's a different game. It's a different game. I think the only big advantage the NFL have over the CFL is probably in the trenches. Just because they're so much bigger, yeah. But other other than that, it's just the the, the outside is so much speed and, and yeah. people with athleticism and just have talent overall who just probably just didn't make the lead because of sometimes just to be an odd man out. Not even talent. They, yeah, people don't understand that. Like <laughs> that's just how the game goes sometimes. Yeah. Like, well, we drafted this guy. We drafted this guy. You're a free agent. Yeah, we ain't getting no money. You just out of here. Like, but yes. I'm better than him. I'm literally better than him. Watch the film. We're in practice. I'm strapping up. He's getting bombed. But I'm the one you're cutting. Okay. They don't, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care, dog. They don't care. And it's about who you know sometimes. Sometimes their agents are cool. It's, it's, I'm not even going to dive into that. We, that's, we've been that's, holding on that's, to that's, that's another night. That's, that's another story. Pie. That's another story. All right, pie, man. Night. Let's go to the game number two of the week. Um, Our boys, my boy, Demario Houston, our boy. Um. Calgary goes on the road again, and they lose to Toronto, to your team, to your boys. Oh, <laughs> it was city. Um, 39-25, the game was tight. It was close. Calgary seemed to have a grasp, grasp of it. And then um, what's my guy? Jake Myers throws a big pick six to Amos. Yeah. And that just changes the game. Generic, man. <laughs> Another freaking return. That's four already halfway through the season. He's on pace halfway. for eight. Yeah. Um, big loss for Winnipeg. We talked about. I talked about that before. I think that was one of the biggest losses that they had. At first, I thought it was Yoshi and, and Jackson, and now I'm looking like when I JP? see their special teams and what they're getting on their kick return and punt return, and I'm seeing what Janari is doing and what he has done for Winnipeg over the years. He's just a big-time playmaker. He's making play after play after play after play for them. He's getting good field position. Toronto, 
they're not really good offensively, but they mm-hmm. make plays. They get turnovers yeah. and they score. They get special teams and they score because Nick Arbuckle or, you know, the other, my, my rookie, I mean, the second year player, Cam, mm-hmm. Cam Dukes, he's not really good. He can't push the ball up the field, can't really mm-hmm. see the field really well. So they actually benched him and they went to Arbuckle because he's a little bit more comfortable with then with an offense, he could push the ball down the field, but that wasn't the case. That wasn't really what happened in the yeah. game. It was just they in the all three phases of the game, the second phase defense and special teams, they 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 beat Calgary. I um, think I, I think what a lot of teams, uh, coordinators forget to look at it when they're thinking about keeping a let to go returner, they highlight the touchdown aspect, right? It's like, oh, this guy got me four touchdowns. Is he gonna do it again? Maybe, maybe not. But sometimes it's not about that, those touchdowns. It's about how many first downs is he giving you. If you catch the ball on the 20, is it getting you to the 40, 30 on average every time? Because now your offense is starting with we know as analytics, one 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 t- well, first down away from points. So yeah. a lot of times you have to value field position and can this guy flip the field for us over just how many touchdowns would I get out of him? Now, mm-hmm. here we go. J- JG is once again doing both. He's giving you field position and touchdown. So I agree with you. One of Winnipeg's biggest loss. Um, I don't know how you don't get that deal done. Or if you don't have a definite security behind that, I don't know how you. It let wasn't that like happen. Nick Taylor was there anymore to return punts. <laughs> I like you better. Than me. Hey, hey, you know how I get down a little bit, a little something. So they used to call me Jukem Taylor. You know, Jukem every Taylor. now and then, you I have my little moves. You, you are fast, man. I get that to you. So, but no, I think that was a huge loss, though. Um, how do you feel about team. Jake Myers and that interception? And in Calgary on the road, they just have – they're on five on the road. They're four and zero at home. Calgary like, is so confusing to me. The they're last, so like, fucking several, confusing this year. years. I just – I don't – I can't understand, like, why do they make so many bad decisions late in the game, offensively and defensively? They'll play special so teams. well. And especially they'll play so well in all three phases of the game or, or well enough to stay in the game. And then you'll watch the third or fourth quarter, and it'll be like, okay, why y'all so deep on defense? Whoa, it's the second and five. Why are you have backs backing up for 30 yards? I understand the scheme, whatever the scheme may be. Why are you backing up 35 yards? I know yards? why. I'm going to keep it quiet on that part a little bit. Ex Calgary. But I'm just I'm just a guy that, that sits back, always competing against Calgary. I'm talking Calgary glory days back in 2017 on, onward. Was a big fan of Calgary back in the day. Loved, loved the, the coach they built there, everything. So for me, when I watch their game in particular, it, it literally confuses me. Like some of the schemes, some of the things that I see, it just I don't understand a secondary that covers grass. Why, like like you you are backing out of there 30 yards deep before the guy even hits the line of scrimmage. And you, get my, you get my passion in it. I, I don't get it. Their one best game this year, they played man against VA. And that was literally their best game. So they got to find a way to mix it up. Where they're not sitting in so much stagnant zones and covering grass in, in, in those turns. These quarterbacks are eating that up. Unless your pass rush to cover grass, to cover grass, your pass rush has to be fucking prolific. You gotta have your pass Wendy, rush is Jackson, not getting there. Sean Lemon, a flow. You gotta have you gotta have those guys. You gotta have yes. those big name guys. You don't yes. got those guys out there doing it, please. Help your yeah, secondary out, help yourself out. I mean, anybody looking for a secondary coach, me and Nick Taylor clean that up right away. <laughs> Those <laughs> long <laughs> developer routes. Yeah, all right. We're going to dive. We're going to leave that game alone. Calgary loses. Toronto gets a rolling. Um, Kadeem Carey is a big, big pickup for them. I'm going I'm to I'm skip over that. I just wanted to say that. I've played, against him. Him since, I've, I've played against him my whole career since college. That boy has been a dog ever since he, Arizona State. Hey, I had Kadeem Carey one time in a phone booth. Me and him in the phone booth. I did the rights. And I dove at him, and my face was in the dirt, and he was going 10, 15 yards. He, and he got outside of me. You know, I'm supposed to force him inside. I, better story. I got a better story. Quick, we're in college, Arizona State versus U of A. I'm at Arizona State, obviously, playing safety. Ball must be on the three-yard line. Red zone. I'm like, yes. Yeah, I'm not going low. I'm not going low. Whatever happened, happened. I know you're getting the ball. I know you're getting the ride. That C gap, B gap open up. So I'm there, like, knees, like, ready, like, to lunch. Not mm-hmm. low. I'm not low by any means. If I'm 5'11", I'm probably, like, 5'8 now, ready to yeah. go. I go to, like, explode up. Man, this boy over my head jump. He must have yeah. jumped about 6'3", I promise you. He's, he's he jumped 6'3", so like this. And I said, no way. I tried to go head up. This guy, 
over me. And I'm like, oh, my. Standing straight he's up. He's so good. Oh, yeah, my he's, he's God. Yeah, he's like that. Injuries, college. injuries fucked him up last year and messed him up last year in Calgary. Yeah. But, and then they had a lot of running backs. Dedrick Mills, we had Peyton. But that guy there, special, especially when he's healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's dive into the next game. I'm sorry to go on that long on that one. Um, Montreal versus Hamilton, 33-23. Bo gets benched immediately. Bo's been having a, <laughs> a pretty <laughs> – Bo's been having a solid year, I think. He's and leading the league. Coach Milanovic said, I don't give a damn. He's talking about I've seen him over the years. He turned the ball over so much. Oh, man. Oh, you're back. You're back. You good? You good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coach, Coach Milanovic say, yeah, you, you out. After like a two possession. But Bo threw a ball across his body. He said, I've seen enough. And I think it was already brewing from the week before. You're like, yeah, we about to make this move eventually. And you're like, quick, quick ass leech. Like, you do the dumbest thing that the thing I don't like. Let me see. Let me see you do one thing. I that's triple it. dare you. I triple dare like, you. If you do this one thing, and that's how it, and that's how it be sometimes. You know, like when when you know a staff and a coach. Like, if you think about it, you know Hamilton hasn't been Hamilton since 2021 when we played mm-hmm. when we played them in the, in the cup. You know. They haven't been 22. 22. I'm sorry. They haven't been up to that standard, up to that par, really. Like, being honest. It might have been 21. In 21. We won the great right. Yeah, 21. Right. They haven't been up to Hamilton standards that we know since 2021. Even when I went there for my little short stint, it, it just wasn't the same from the staff to the, the, the team. And I'm not down talking to anybody, but I'm a fan now. So you come at me all you want, but it just has not been the same that we're used to seeing. So now when you they- got a city behind you, because I live here, this, this is Tiger Town. Uh, a city that backs yeah, the town yeah. up, and they don't like this stuff. That's all they have to rely on. So you got a staff, you got coaches that feel the pressure. So when the fans, the fans are smart. When they see across the body pick again, the fans are like, okay, he did it again. So of course he's like, all right, it ain't no me, get out. So now if they lose, yeah, at least at least the coach made a move. Do I agree with the yeah. move? So, no, but why would they bring in a? Why would they have a? Why would they not let him go in the offseason when you have such a young team that was going to be a developing team this year? Their whole secondary pretty young, except for Richard. Then they brought Moxie in. Mm-hmm. But they're a young team around the whole board. I mean, I, they brought back Dunbar after a while. But, I mean, it's like, was it enough my thing was, for them to say, hey, let's keep Bo, Bo as that guy So I feel like instead of just going to Taylor from the get-go? I feel like this. It's like on the front floor in the media, you, you say what you have to say. But behind closed doors, you know, are you able to compete with what's going on in the league? The answer is mm-hmm. probably no. If you looked at if you mm-hmm. looked at that roster from last year that they constructed, <laughs> I don't know what they did last year with. Oh, I don't know what they were just out there just throwing names in the hat. But if you you look behind closed doors, say, can we actually compete this year for real? For real, you might be mm-hmm. able to compete, but then you ask yourself, okay, are we? If we try to force ourselves to compete, are we going to be good for the years to come? That answer might yep. be no. So now you say, okay, let me keep some key core piece pieces. Let me develop some young guys that are really good. Let me develop this young quarterback that's really good. Quarterbacks pop up in free agency all the time. So if this young quarterback isn't good, I can go snap somebody up, <laughs> VA, like, you know, and then go like that, you know? So I feel like they kind of should have just not – you don't ever ease off because anything can happen. I mean, I, I want a great cut my first year 9-9. Nine nine. Anything can happen. So you don't ease off, but you don't – don't remind me. I know, right? That was against you. But you don't like, you don't just say, oh, yeah, we got it. You know, you got to be realistic and, re- and and real with yourself and plan for the future. Or else you're going to be here one and done, and, and that's it. Same old, same old. Back where you started at. But the CFL is a league where you can be terrible one year and have a great free agency and be good exactly. the next year. It's just, just how it works. That's just how it goes in this game. One-year contracts, two-year contracts. People looking for a better team. Team got cap space. They can bring this person, this person. Hey, I'm friends with this person. Hey, bro, come with me. Let's let's rock exactly. it out over here, here and do that. So that's one thing that is good about it in this situation. Draft picks really don't matter in this league. Like, okay, I got the number one draft pick. We're going to tank for the number one draft yeah, pick. That yeah, really don't matter yeah. for, for the most part. I mean, unless it was straight um, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, All right, let's uh, watch out now. Um, So Montreal really punished them that game. Mm-hmm. Um, Montreal's really good. Oh Jesus Christ! They, yeah. Um, they're on pace to just smash the whole season. Um, what's my guy? My guy Thorpe got it going. Jason Moss got it going. The backup quarterback, Davis Alexander, mm-hmm. has came in 
and hasn't skipped the beat from what Cody was doing at the beginning. Of the year. Cody already was starting off with an MOP type of type of season. I, I <laughs> Cody came back this year with that monkey off his mm-hmm. back and was slanging it because knowing around the league, it was like you know, shoot, we can we can handle yeah. Cody this and that that mistake here, mistake there a little bit. You don't play with too much confidence sometimes. You can get him off his yeah. game. Not this Cody. This Cody is like I'm a fucking champion and. I know how to ball now, but he's out for a little bit. But this young guy is holding it down. I just wanted to shout out Cody, but this young guy is holding it down. Like you said earlier, you said it's just because, you know, not not much film on him. Mm -hmm. Their defense is amazing, so he's going to get plenty of turns. He could take a little bit of gambles because – or just not turn the ball over because the defense is going to get you the ball back with plenty of opportunities and great field position. Yeah, what I can say is, um, yeah, once again, shout out to Cody. Uh, Definitely a guy that – you know, didn't know if he would ever win a championship or reach that level. Playing in SAS, going against Winnipeg, and having to go against Calgary his whole career. Shout out to him for picking himself about the dirt because that was his last really chance. You know, and he and he went and did better than anybody can do. I would say this though: when you look at certain teams play, like you look at like a Montreal team for the last, I would say since 2021, that's when they started to get good on defense. That's when you're like, okay, you got to watch them on defense. We didn't believe in the oh, offensive deep. side, right? But we said that defense is is, is special. Thrupps in so much exotic pressures. Exotic pressures, exotic looks. He got the right guys in the right spot. But what Austin can say is you can tell when a team is playing fun and playing free without the worry and stress. I remember that. Without the worry and stress of, oh, am I going to get benched? Oh, am I going to get yelled at? Oh, am I going to get just, oh, my God. You can't you can't coach a team to play well that way. It's impossible. <laughs> You're, impossible. I got caught on. I don't want to look to the sideline of my coaches looking at me like Which this. Which team was that? Which team was that that uh, recently of uh, or the past two three years where players play like that or had to watch out for every move they made because their key card might not work the next day they go in just by one game two practices your ass is out of here. Chris, Chris Jones, Chris Jones, and you, he was changing it's, rosters left and right. You know what I mean? Like it's just you know you got to build continuity. You, you, Cont- continuity. Is it's, you, and that is just understanding, you know what I mean? Like if I'm now if I'm during the week not doing everything right that I gotta I gotta do for the week, that's a different story. But that's more like mm-hmm. locker room stuff. Mm-hmm. Mo- long story short, Montreal, you can tell that they're playing for each other, which is key. They're playing for that coach and they're having mm-hmm. fun. They're having fun. They're not yep. tripping, they're not stressing, they're having fun. And it reminds me a lot of when we went on that run. When we went on that run, it was different. It was just a different vibe. We wasn't worried about nothing. We knew we was going to come back. So, Even if you had us down, we were still laughing and joking. Like, I, right. I remember vividly against Montreal when they, was, they, they said we ain't played the body yet. And they up. They're up by like 16, 14. I don't know. And me, you, and uh, the Alfred, we laugh and we like, y'all boys think y'all going to win? Like, not even like nothing. Like, like, like y'all tripping. Like, we Chill out. Went. Chill out. And so. But no, uh, I'm, I'm loving what Montreal's doing. Shout out to Cody, and I'm I'm hearing that Austin Mack could return if he don't get signed. Return of the Mac. If, he, if 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 I saw a report, if he gonna try NFL one more time, I mean preseason. Return of the Mac. Preseason's Mac. going on right now, so I I you know I, shout out to him. I wish it happens, but he said if it don't work out, he will be back in Montreal. You add him to that receiver core with um, um, Bo, uh, Julian Grant, and Phil Pot. And then that run and Fletcher. And Reggie White's been and Reggie doing White pretty is, good. Yeah, he, yeah. Hey. I, all right, man. Yeah, Montreal is looking scary this year. Um, the, but we all know it ain't about how you start. How you finish. It's how you finish in this league. How you finish. Um, last but not least, the game of – not the game of the week, but um, BC versus Edmonton, 33-16. Um, what's the biggest difference? Of the, well, we know the biggest difference of this team. Two things happen. They fired their coach. Yeah. The coach, the coach said, "I'd rather be fired than play Trey Ford." He, I never seen a coach say, "The guy who get, got me my only win since being here, I'm gonna bench him and I'm not gonna play him. I'm gonna bring in another quarterback." Who I I got McLeod. I'm I'm cool with him, mm-hmm. whatnot. But even when they say he's a great Cup champion, I'm like, ah. That whole game when he was in, win that game if he stayed. They were Toronto was doing damn a damn we, thing. They would have lost we, until Chad Kelly came in and made a couple big plays, and and Leaks made a big return. Yes, but so I wasn't as big on this bringing him in. I know why they did it because they're like, oh, we got these receivers, we need to get the ball in their mm-hmm. hands. But man, you having somebody like Trey Ford, who's just a video game type of player at quarterback position, 
you just do things that you just can't explain. You have to keep that guy on the field because he he keeps he made their defense look better than what it was. Exactly. Last week and in the beginning of this week, they played better than they ever played, and it's not it's quite a, it's not a coincidence. It's because Trey Ford is in the game because they hold the ball more on offense. They 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 keep the time of possession, so their defense will get a chance to go fuck up like they normally mm-hmm. do, and then look like the team is just happy to play for this yeah. guy because he brings them a different type of energy, and that's the biggest thing that I, and I know he got hurt. And McLeod came back in and finished the game, but Trey Ford set the whole damn standard. He set the move. Well, he got them. What going. I'm gonna say is this: is, is, is shout out to Trey Ford, man. T Ford, man, you doing your thing. Um, it's it's a it's a reoccurring theme here. Quarterbacks that can keep a play extended, that can extend plays. Mm-hmm. You look at the greats. You look at Zach. You look at Va. You look at Nathan Work. You look at uh, uh, Drew Brown, you look at Trey Ford, these guys extend plays. When you extend plays, you would be one of the best in the league to ever do it. We don't want to, we can't cover for that long. Man, it, coach, man you, you, you start extending a play and, and now my back is turned. Like, once you extend a play and you got a guy that can extend a play like he can, because you know, Zach does it in his own different way. VA does it yeah. different. This guy's extending plays like he's out there like Michael Vick and Doug Flutie. I saw some clips today. I'm like, he's I'm like, whoa, like he's extending plays had, like a human joystick and then throwing it down field still. Off balance, off one leg. <laughs> I was like, Guys, but you know what he also does? He's opened up the run game for Leak. for Leaks. Oh he opened God. up the run game for Brown because your DN can't come crashing down at the quarterback. Yeah. He has to play. He has to contain. And now the holes are so much bigger. Your D linemen, your D tackles have to have so much of a, a bigger job that week to control and run. Your linebackers got to be mm-hmm. up there ready to, to to jump in gaps. Your safety might have to come down. Yep. You might have to start sending some Sam pressures and stuff just to control him and keep him in contained while still controlling Brown and the RPO that they that they they provide and the, against the defense. And the thing I want to add too, and give him another shout out on is is as much as we're talking about his legs and extending plays, he's out there throwing that rock too, though. He's actually very, oh, yeah. very accurate. So if you're a defensive coordinator, a defensive player, you're like, okay, let's stop the feet, load the box up. He's accurate quarterback now. Like, I've seen leaps in his passing game from the, the first time I've seen him play to now. He's actually very accurate with the ball. It's not. It's, it looks like he just throwing it. No, he's accurate and pinpoint accurate. So that also makes it hard for opposing offense. I mean, defensive is because if he's throwing the ball accurate and he got a run threat, what do you do? Do you blitz? You get, you get, and they got the receivers. I got to make him throw the ball against me and I'm going to keep my eye, all eyes on him. We're double trapping my corners every game against him so I can have them eyes low on him. So if he do breaks outside the containments, I got a little bit of speed with my corners. They can come out of coverage a little bit and do a little something. Hey. something. I still got four high. And people running around the box. Hey, but my defense that's what I would do against him. My defense man, don't get the spinning. I don't want to see no spin. <laughs> if I see if I see coach calling games, I'm checking. Don't call no games. Like, listen, I keep seeing games. What are y'all? Games? Tag them and loop. Oh, y'all my. boys don't just rush straight and get that left and right hand up. I don't want to see no spin mm-hmm. moves. Mm-hmm. Straight rush lanes. You, you have to. All right. Yeah. This is not y'all game. This is not, not your game. <laughs> this is not your this game, not dog. Me. I'm trying to tell you. you next week. Next you, week, week. You eat. But t- today. It's not your game. You, it's not you know your game. So you I think that's that. what you got to understand. So you can't, you can't run the games on them. You know what I mean? Like You out there being selfish trying, selfish. To, trying to get yours. Just, no, not this not week. Not this week, man. Hands up, please. Oh, run, run the text. No. Run this. Run the text. No. Run the game. Run. No. Nah, no, not sir. this week, baby. No. It's not. Straight All right, man. Get off. Get off. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, we're going to jump into uh, Nick's power rankings, man. I'm going to keep it short and sweet because we dove into that topic a little bit too deep. Um, At number nine, we got Hamilton. Edmonton moves up to eight. For sure. Number seven, we have Calgary. Number six, we have Winnipeg. Number five, I have Toronto. Number four, I have... um. Sass, number no number five. I, number four, I have BC. Okay. Number three, I have Sass. Number two, I still have Ottawa there because they had a tie. No way, I can't change yeah. it from what I had last week. And number one, I'm gonna keep the the boys, the ballers. I like that. The league leaders. I agree. Montreal at number one. I agree. And that's what I'm gonna do with my my power rankings for this week. I like that. 
That's fair. You like it? You ain't changing nothing? Nah, that's fair. That's fair. All right, all right, all right. Cool, 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 cool. Um, Well, right now, we're going to dive into it. Um, We're going to come back to Nick Picks, but right now, we're going to say the big story. We waited too long. We, yeah. we dove into those games right. too much. But it happens when you get two players that play the game and know little ins and outs about the league, and and we start rambling. We, we, we get a little hype. Yeah, Our juices start to we think we can get back out there. I got, I got, I got ten plays in me, Darby. I got ten plays. I got my. Ret- I got ten plays I'm left. Straight. I'm straight. I'm good. All right, man. All right, man. The biggest news of the day, man. Um, Nathan Rourke comes back to the CFL. I thought it was going to happen two weeks ago, but he got another chance with the Atlanta Falcons. Um, he played that one game against the Dolphins. Didn't go too well for him, and now he's back in the CFL and with none other than the BC Lions, who had the quarterback who was probably at the top of the MOP race the first five, six games until the last two games that he had wasn't pretty well. Have, couldn't happen at a better time for, for you know, for the BC general managers and everybody up top of the organization to say, hey, we could bring him back now, even though no matter what, you would have had to bring that guy back because he's Canadian, he's a baller, he did things that we've probably never seen from a Canadian quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, that 2021 season, yep. um, before he left to the league, and it kind of NBA got hurt, so it was like, hey, more of a reason to hey, let's bring him in. We got, it's, there's no reason not to bring him in. We have to bring him. In. It, it was kind of, it wasn't even like they had a gun at at BC net. It was just like you have to bring him in. He's just Nathan Rourke, and we have to deal with VA situation later on down the line when it comes to it. And I think he will be traded. They're trying to tell me, yeah, we got two quarterback mm-hmm. situation. No, you can't don't. keep those two quarterbacks. Not at that. Not at that pay. No, <laughs> not at yeah, all. So uh, they're gonna have to make a move. So Nathan Rourke is back. How do you feel about that? I mean, it's 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 easier to talk. Not okay. Not easier because VA is a close friend of mine. It's my boy from from Cali. And I, it sucks that he got hurt. And it and it said, okay, it makes sense. But even then, I'm hearing he's week to week. And then part of me yep. looking at this deal, it makes me think like, even if he wasn't hurt, they were still ready to offer. I don't know why I get that feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, of course. Like, like, even if he wasn't hurt, they were still ready to offer. And it's like, that just reminds me and takes you back to like, how, you know, this league can be from the political standpoint, from the politics standpoint. But when it comes to this time of the year, it's like, and, this, their player's going to get cut from the NFL. There's old CFL players that was that's gonna get cut, and they just had a hell of a year last year, and they're coming back and they're getting their spot. But now, when you talk about an elite person like Nathan Rourke, even though it was a short amount of time, people acting like he been doing this in his league for three, four, five it years. Was it was eight season. games yeah. to start the yeah. season, and then two games in the playoffs. One against Calgary, and then once one against Winnipeg, which Winnipeg always has his number. Yeah, you know, three interceptions at the first game, and in the in the that, in the West Finals, right. he threw a couple interceptions, yeah. and they they had him in, on the wraps. But those eight games, those games against some other teams, that, a, that was one of the it was crazy. best quarterback play I ever, ever seen. Did. He's he's quick with the ball. He don't hold the ball. He's athletic. He could read the he could read the whole game, read the field, and he's letting that shit go quick. And it's on a dime. I think one play against us after the two bombs that on my head from. <laughs> From Rhymes that game, um, he had one play where he rolled right and then threw the ball seventy yards all the way across the field on a post to mm-hmm. Hollis. And I know Rose was like, "What the fuck? Wow. I'm about to get this pick." Winston Rose, and then that ball landed like on a dime. Mm-hmm. And you just saw the arm talent and the type of game that this guy has, and that's something you can't miss, especially a Canadian quarterback. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, Nick, I'll tell you, Nick, he, he's tough, and, and, and he extends plays. Once again, yeah, it's gosh. another little reoccurring thing. But you no, know, he's amazing. I think he's. I think he's a. I mean, I think he's great. I think he's a good quarterback. You know, I, mean, I like everything. I like everything about his game. There's, there's nothing about his game that I really don't like right now. I've I've never dove too too deep in it. You know what I mean? Because I was more always focused on us, and you got to beat us, which we did a real mm-hmm. good job of stopping that from happening when he went when he was in the league. But uh, I think this is a great move. I think it's the right move. Um, it's just, I wish the narrative changed. Changes like you. You can lie to the fans and the and the, to me and you. All the he's not being traded. V eight man. You don't sign a guy. You don't sign a guy to eight hundred eight hundred thousand dollars hard money, not including the bonuses. Almost probably a million dollars. Quarterback. You don't sign a guy for three years, eight hundred million 
hard money and then say the guy that was leading MOP is not going to be traded. Come on, man. Why, why are you giving that deal <laughs> you, then? <laughs> you have you have to because VA probably making about 500. So you have no defense, and, no nothing. And he was the mother he, the first five games, he was the best player in the league. Yes. His, <laughs> by, by far. far. He was throwing dimes across the field. He was he was doing the one thing that was a weakness for him was throwing the ball across zone defenses and, yeah. and being accurate. He was being accurate. Very accurate. Um, and he wasn't he was using his feet, his athleticism when he needed to. He wasn't just like, Oh, I gotta yeah. use it just for and, no rhymes and, and, and I reasons. would say, like, as a quarterback, VA has always been a good face of the league. You know, he's a good dude off the field. You know, he's always hosting his teammates mm-hmm. over. And, and where, is he at? where is he at? Washington, I believe. He's always having like, yeah, his eyes open and stuff, stuff like that. So as far as a good guy with character, like, he's a great guy to have a, to, to be a face of the league as well. So you have everything you want in a quarterback for the league, for the team. But then Canadian Golden Boy shows up. What are you going to do? <laughs> what you going to do? There's nothing you can do about it. So where, do, where does VA go when he – where did, what team? What team? If I'm VA, yeah. if I'm VA, I don't want to. It's uh, back to Hamilton. It's hard for me to say that because it's you, you, he can maybe change the culture there, but the culture has to change there, man. It has to change. And Hamilton, yeah, it has to change because he can go there as good as he is, and if the culture is the same, if if the coaching is the same, it's for all for nothing. Bo Levi is leading the league right now, passing yards, and I think a couple other stat categories. And it ain't working there. And I know Bo's a great team so, guy. I know Bo's a good family guy. I know Bo's a good mm-hmm. leader. So what's the issue? What about – all right, this is a big okay. one. Trevor Harris has been hurt. He The past couple of years, you, you're like up and down with the injuries. He's getting older. And the funny thing is, is that Trevor Harris ran VA out of Montreal. Do you bring VA – Back as the quarterback that he is now, to back to Sass, where he was, he probably been to every quarter, every team in this league close to it. Does you do you think about that as Sass because you have a championship contender team right now, but your starting quarterback, you can't depend on him because of his injuries. He's getting older. Is that a, a, a good choice? I, I would I wouldn't mind seeing how much he gonna get Trevor and Sass gonna get VA. Trevor eats up the East. He loves the East. I wouldn't mind seeing that happen. <laughs> I wouldn't, mind, I wouldn't mind seeing Trevor and Hamilton and VA and Sass. You know what I mean? I think I think that's Saskatchewan culture. I think that's Saskatchewan, you know, the head man up there, Corey Mason, what that team identifies. I think Dave fits in perfectly there with his mindset and his leadership and his qualities. Not no knock on Trevor. Trevor, I, I love you. I've been competing against you since I came in the league. You're a, no, it's a, just, it's the business of it. You're getting older. It's your injuries is happening back to back now. They're happening often. Like we, we, we don't we, know when we, you're gonna be back for your injury. We're just playing Madden right now. We're just playing picking the pieces where we want to put them. We're just having fun. No, it's not no. I want to see you out there or nothing like that. No, not anything. Yeah, just, of course, you're doing great. What about doing great. Calgary, Jake Myers. Do, do they? Do they? Ooh. Is that a team that you, you go out and get them and and you give up on Jake and and, and you mm-hmm. you turn over a new no, room? No, and, you don't, and go you, you, start you new? give up on Jake. You, you have one of the best backups in the league in Jake. If that's the okay. if VA wins that job, because you still have to go in there and compete no matter what. But if I'm Calgary, if this year goes like any other year we've seen, like it. Hold on. Go, do you make a trade for him right now? Like, do you call BC and offer up the oh, whole damn cow and the moon and the stars and, and, and everything for him? Like, oh, do you trade for him right now for the last nine games of the season? To make a, a a championship run, or you do just let him sit over there in BC on the bench. Calgary, I don't offer up the whole everything for him because he's going to become a free agent at some point in time. So I'm not going to give up too many assets for you for uh, from Calgary to BC because BC, you guys are going to lose him no matter what. So you either take this third round, second round draft pick, and you let him come over here, or I'm gonna just wait, wait it out. Jake, go ahead, and that's it. Once again, it's like and Jake have approval. Yeah, a lot of pressure on Jake this year. It's then. like it's like what I spoke about earlier with the whole helmet situation. Sometimes you got to look back in the room and say, you know what? Anything can happen, but let's not let's not overstep or overcompensate to make it happen now. Let's not give up a receiver, a first round, a, a tackle, and, and then we bring in VA. You know what I mean? Let's here goes a third round, second round pick. I mean, even a first round pick at this point because you got you eating you know, up your cap space. You got to get a, you, you got you can't you keep can't him. Keep I'm pretty him. sure you can't I, keep him. And so I think I think if you're Calgary, you, you 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 present something like that. Um, if you're Sass, you chill right now because even Patterson's been playing well actually. So like, I think Sass is probably. But they're losing. Yeah. Is it because of the defense of Patterson? Patterson has his moments, but does VA win those games for Sass? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say. It's hard to say because 
It's hard to say, but I think I think there's three good options out there for VA. I think you got Calgary, I think you got Hamilton, I think you got Sass. That you know, and, and okay. Sass being the the the, the long shot because they have uh, what I think is are two good quarterbacks right now. But I think Calgary mm-hmm. is really is a is a serious like they should really sit down at the wrong drawing board and really see if they can figure that out because yeah. since Bo left, since he took the job over from Bo, we have not seen what we thought we were going to see. I'm sorry. Yeah, because because he was the Winnipeg killer. We know, what, we, we know what he could do. We know what he's capable of. Like he can make any throw on the field, and he got a quick release, mm-hmm. and he's smart, and he can he can move. It just hasn't been done. You got all the receivers over there. You got the running backs. You you got, you know, the defense could have a little more pieces over there, but you got enough. Mm-hmm. You got enough. No. Yep. So okay. All right, all right. Um, I think we already dove into all of them. I don't have to go back in the bow situation. We talked about that. We talked about what Trey Ford means to that team. We talked about Rourke coming back to the league, what that does to VA, VA going to a new team possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, the market's open, or does he stay in BC and they have two MOP like quarterbacks that make sense. on the roster at the same time? When one is sitting on the bench hoping, or not hoping, but seeing if the other ones get hurt and then he could come in. But what kind of season is yep. that for somebody who's going to have, I mean, at one point he was going to throw for 6,000 yep. yards and now he's like, now he's an afterthought in BC, and I and I and I can't help but say that that fractures the locker room a little bit because I know there's a lot of people that ride for VA, yeah. and they're like, "Man, you couldn't have done this. You like, don't do this. He's our guy. He's our quarterback. He's been here last year. He's here this year. He almost got us to the championship. We're right there against Winnipeg, um, and now you're just gonna let him out to you know just fall from grace from what he did for our team yeah. over the last two years, and even the year when he stepped in for Rourke when Rourke got hurt. And now you're looking at the whole situation. There's people in the locker room, and we know, and we know people that we 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 heard some yeah. noise or some rumbling. People felt a little awkward mm-hmm. about it, and we're like, I've even, I've even well, seen some tweets of some ex ex Hall of Fame uh, CFL players, and they're like, if BC does VA wrong, I'll never watch a BC game again. You know, so because it's, it's like at, at some point, but, right in front of how do you how do they do them right? How can they do them right? You, you tell the truth. You tell the truth. You say, hey, listen. <laughs> We're going to trade you. What, okay. what, what a lot of GMs, and I mean, I'm sorry, I don't want to go too long. What a lot of GMs and coaches don't understand is we can handle it. Just be honest. Don't tell mm-hmm. me I'm not going nowhere. I'm not trading. Then I walk in there one Tuesday and I get the. <laughs> you out of here. Coach want to see you. Come here. Come, come to the. Yeah, so what? we just. We just, so you just said uh, a week ago. we just feel like right now we're going in two separate directions. What? I thought we were driving on the same road. Now you're telling me we're going in two separate Bro, directions. We're going on the same direction yesterday. I'm telling you, they, what are you they, talking they about? They can't be honest to say they like, boy. They're awkward. They don't know how to deal with people because when you get so caught up in this game, in this world of football, all you know is football. They don't even know their wives. Yeah, you know, you're not around their family as much. Yeah. Like, they don't know how to be around regular people anymore, yeah. just how to tap. Regular conversation, like, just business, the business, the what's business. What's the like, business? Oh. I saw you bring in this this safety that was a two time all star. I, I, I get it. <laughs> that my position. <laughs> you you ain't talking to me like you was cracking jokes two weeks ago, and all of a sudden it ain't nothing funny what around us no more. Bro, <laughs> you ain't making eye contact. <laughs> like I know I can. I got cut enough I, to know what it looked like. If I, have, if I ever get. become a coach. I don't know how it worked. I don't know if they getting told. I'm going to be honest with y'all, bro. Hey, listen, brother. You just gave me three touchdowns last week. Love you. Look at, we love you. But you can't play for us. You just can't play for us. And it's okay. You know what I mean? And, okay. then don't be, and then don't be alarmed if the next guy can't play and I'm calling you back. Because <laughs> I might need you. I might need you back. Yeah, I might need you back. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right, man. Um. I'm gonna keep this short. Going to the next next part of this, man. We're gonna go into next picks. Um, last week I I went two and one in the tie game. I think this is a block. Yeah. So two and one. Um, Calgary let me down. I went with Calgary on the road. Okay. I'm not doing that again until they show me they can win on the yeah. road. Not doing it again. But they're playing at home this week against Ottawa. Um, Jeremiah Mazzoli. We didn't go into that. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna go into it right now. Jeremiah Mazzoli comes back. But I like Calgary at home to keep their win streak going. Um, minus 2.5. I'm taking Calgary to win that game um, and them points. Um, next game, we got Sass against Montreal. They're playing at Sass. Montreal's just too too hot right now. I know Sass is tough to win there, but I'm going 
I'm going with um I'm going with No, I'm going with the home team. I'm going with Sass. Okay. Two point five. Sass get the win. Um I'm getting taking the points. Two point five money line and I'm taking the points. Okay. Two point five. Um the next game I got Edmonton at Hamilton. Um Edmonton. If Trey Ford I didn't I don't know if he's back. I know he has the I, that one's tough to pick because if he's not you know what? Hamilton at home, going with Hamilton. I like Taylor. Okay. Taylor's playing well. I'm going with Hamilton, just money line straight up to win that game. I'm not taking the points, just money line. Um and then we have the Sunday game. Big game, okay. Winnipeg at BC. Um Nathan Rourke is back. He's starting. Um Winnipeg, I, I went against y'all last time at at home against BC. Against my against my heart, my own judgment, because I know BC is tough for them to win in Winnipeg. I know they got a couple wins, but I know what it is historically. So um Nathan worked first game back, Winnipeg, JY, defensive coordinator. He has you know, he kind of got a good feel about Nathan Work. It's been a while. He's coming into big expectations. The crowd is going to be loud. It's probably going to be sold mm-hmm. out. Um, I'm going with Winnipeg. With plus 2.5, I'm, I'm taking that. Mm-hmm. I'm, I got 2.5 lead. I'm going with Winnipeg. I'm taking that one that game. Um, that's my my upset of the week. How you feel about that, Darby? You want me to go back over I'm it sorry. for you? I'm quickly. I'm sorry. I'll be quick. My apologies. I'm going Ottawa over Calgary. Um. Mm-hmm. I like Jeremiah Masoli with Tommy Condell back, so you might see a lot of that old stuff they used to do together in Hamilton, which was electric. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah Masoli first game back in what since the Grey Cup, I believe, or or or. No, he played last year. He got hurt when he came game? back. Yeah, he got hurt when he came back. Yeah. But Jeremiah Masoli and Tommy Condell back together. They was together the whole almost their whole career in the Hamilton as the, his offensive coordinator. They got good receivers. They got what Masoli is used to, that speed. So I'm going with Ottawa versus Calgary. Uh, I'm going in, I'm going Sass against Montreal. Home team. I'm going home team. I'm going Edmonton versus uh, uh, Hamilton. They got too many internal problems. My dog Bo posted on this, on this story. Since I lost my job, my daughter set up a uh, lemonade stand. By the way, Bo, if they got the lemonade, man, I live in the area. I'll come buy a couple. You know what I mean? Shout out to you. But they got they got some things going on, you know what I mean? When you when your quarterback they got benches post on the story that he got benched and his daughter to sell lemonade to, to make rent. You know what I mean? That ain't never a good sign. So I'm going Edmonton. I'm going Edmonton. And of course I'm going I got the hat on, so I gotta go with my boys, man. <laughs> my boy get that fifty one fifteen. He's not getting selling lemonade. You didn't see the story? Oh, you didn't see it? Nick? Nick, he posted on Instagram. His daughters had a lemonade stand set up, and he quoted it and said, "When your daughter, when you get, when you lose your job, and your daughter's got to set up lemonade, Man, that paycheck's still coming, Bo. <laughs> Relax. And, and that paycheck been nice the last but few years. If you know, years. if you know Bo, 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 Pe- Bo Petty too. You know that he'll be funny. Bo Petty, Bo Petty. Bo Petty. Bo Petty. So that's why I got. That's why I got to go. Like that's why I got to go Everton, man. They got. They got problems, but I'm serious on that lemonade, but I'll come pick some up, man. I'll come grab some, real, real. Man, only thing that changed for me that game, I didn't, I didn't go and look up Trey Ford if he's gonna be back with that. I think he's this is ribs. He yeah. got, I, I got banged up pretty much too. Yeah, so that that game, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I, I, I like Mac against uh, Hamilton all the time though too. So it's another thing. No way. I, 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 but they they feeling good. And you know what? They feeling good. But I'm a, I'm gonna keep my picks. Okay. The picks. That's Nick's picks this week. Um, Darby he brought it to y'all. He gave you his his picks and how he feel this week. Um, and then um, we're gonna go into the last segment of the night. Is Nick's O Canada O Canada okay. Player of the Week from last week? Who balled? Who showed out? Who did they damn thug dizzle? Um, I'm gonna keep it short this week. It's two Montreal players, man. Um, shout out to Roland Milligan. They can't have another interception. God damn it. Somebody stop him. Stop throwing him the ball. Defense I can't even say stop throwing him the ball. Defense player of the year? Defense player of the year? He might, he might be the first DB since Don't um, let's phone here this. This is my guy. Don't let's phone. Since Javon. Don't let's phone here this. He, you know, Spoon out there hunting right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, player of the weeks, man. Damn, I got the wrong paper. Um, offense is Charles Rambo, six. Receptions, 124 yards, two TDs. Big week for him. Bombed up Hamilton secondary. Mm-hmm. The young guys out there, they had a tough day with him. Dealing with him that night, he's starting to get confidence. Yeah. Um, uh, If they bring back Mac, it'll go along with him and the group that they got. Woo, shoot. 
Um, on defense, I'm going to stick with Montreal, man. This linebacker's been balling. He's been doing his thing. Both of the linebackers have been balling, but Darnell Sankey been holding down the middle for them, holding down the fort, the leader, the voice of their defense right now. He came over last year, and he hasn't lost a game. I don't think no, he's got it. there. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, he has six tackles, one interception, one fumble recovery, and those are my two O Canada, O Canada players of the week, man. Um, Y'all hit that follow button, like, subscribe, do what the hell you got to do. Hit that subscribe button, man. We're trying to bring more attention to the CFL because we truly love the game. Um, we played for a while. Darby played for a while. I played for a while. And it was truly good to us. And it's just so much fun. And I don't think a lot of people understand because they don't understand the rules or they just think that's just a second-tier league. But it's a really fun league, especially if you get to know the rules, you get to know the game, and you watch it, you'll be like, damn, all three aspects of the game matter. Special teams is big. Offense is big. Defense is big. And you put all three together, you, you get a championship. You get a real fun game, a little different. Like, special teams matters. Mm -hmm. Like, it ain't no ducking and dodging. That. It ain't no kicking it out of bounds. It ain't no, you know, yeah. it's literally, literally, even if you miss a field goal, it's, it's, it's the most exciting thing to see. And you got returners like JG, J. Janarian, Grant, um, Leaks, um, Deadman in Ottawa, um, and and Alfred and, and Sass yep. and these guys are just made the game a whole take it to a whole different level. Yep. So we just keep trying to keep bringing some new eyes to the league, man. The former players, man, y'all share this, man. It's for y'all. It ain't for me. I ain't playing. Shit, yep. Darby ain't playing. It's for y'all. Y'all share it. Trying to bring more attention to y'all. Hopefully that put more money in y'all pockets mm -hmm. later on. Maybe a dollar for me. So. Uh, a little dollar too for me. I just want to go to the. Great Cup game in BC this year and, and, and be a media person. Oh, that'll be lit. That'll be dope. Let's get uh -huh. on there, y'all. Come on. Come on. So this is episode seven of Come On CFL. Like I say, presented by Come On Now, the podcast. Um, we're doing really good, and we are partnered with Bet99. If y'all are gambling, don't – hey, that's on y'all, man. Gamble safely. Please do. Um Nick picks is Nick picks. Darby picks is Darby picks. We just give you all some no insight on that. You didn't bet, you didn't. <laughs> just give you all some insight on how we feel from former players. And that's it, man. Um, um, I'm let Darby got anything to say, man. man. First and foremost, I just want to say, man, it was an honor to be on here. Uh, I've never really done anything like this outside of sharing my thoughts with a group chat because I'm not really. You really good, man. I like do this again. I appreciate that a lot. I, I'm just. It's like you said. It's a passion for it. It's easy to talk about something that you actually like and love, you know what I mean? It's something that you actually pay attention to on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, I appreciate you letting me uh, have the time to share your platform with you, your podcast. It's a major thing you're doing for the league because as a former player, the league itself and a lot of other people around the league don't do this. And if they do, we don't market they it. Don't, they don't, they don't market, market it enough. And when they do do it, and it's such a good game, it's such a great game. When they do do it, they use, you know, pretty much the same rollout of players, you know what I mean? Which is great. But there's so many other uh, amazing players in this league. There's so many other guys with stories in this league with with uh, uh, amazing backgrounds and, and a skill set that I think should be highlighted and talked about. So um, shout out to you, man, for taking the time to do this. I know you got a family. I know you got a busy life and a life of your own. So CFL and even the current players and former players should be dope. And we should thank you that you even take your time to do this. So I want to say thank you and uh, come on now. <laughs> come on now man appreciate you man come on cfl baby have a good one man y'all hit that follow button man we signing off see y'all next week yes, sir